Well, good afternoon or good evening or good day, wherever you are. My name is Jocelyn Coe and I am an educator at the National Portrait Gallery. I am actually filling in for my colleague, Brianna White, and I am joined by my wonderful colleague, Vanessa, who I'll have um, introduce herself. Hi, everyone. I am also an educator at the National Portrait Gallery, and I'm happy to be here with you all today and to be collaborating with my colleague, Jocelyn. Great. Um, and we are so glad that you are here this evening or today for our workshop focusing on Hung Lu, Portraits of Promised Lands. I do wanna begin our time together as we do with all of our programs, and that is with a land acknowledgement. Although we're getting together today from different places, we gratefully acknowledge that, I'm sorry, if we could um, make sure we're on mute so that we can minimize any background noises. So I, as I said, um, although we're getting together today from different places, we gratefully acknowledge the native peoples on whose ancestral homelands we gather, as well as the diverse and vibrant native communities who make their home here today. We also recognize that since the nation's founding, who is represented and how one is represented reflects the country's flaws as well as its strengths. The National Portrait Gallery strives to present a more complete narrative, one that acknowledges the history of slavery, racism, and inequality in the United States. And um, yes, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, I know you all are pros at uh, Zoom now, but um, if you could just stay muted um, throughout the program um, for now to minimize any background noises, we will be asking for participation with the chat box. And um, at times we will ask um, if you'd like to unmute and share. Um, so with that, we are actually curious if you have been to the National Portrait Gallery here in Washington, D.C. before. So if you could put in the chat box a quick yes or no, if you've ever visited in person. Ooh, I'm seeing a mixture, some yes and some no. All right, well, um, the museum is open to the public currently, so just a FYI. And um, this is another question about visiting. Have you ever brought your students for a visit to the museum before? Quick yes or no to that. <laughs> I see a mixture of yes, no, I wish. All right. Well, that is good to know. Well, hopefully um, you all and your students will have a chance to make it to the National Portrait Gallery one day. Well, the mission of the National Portrait Gallery is to tell the story of the United States through individuals who have helped shape it. And um, we do that through portraiture. Now, as with any story, there are characters that come and go, um, stories that are told and seen, and um, the mission of the museum is to tell those stories through the portraits. All right, um, Vanessa, should we move on to, are we on? Oh yes, here we are. Okay, so in regards to our session, we hope that um, this will be a time to nurture you as learners. Um, I'm sure you all probably have had full days already and we'd like you to just slow down, take a moment and take things in. And we hope that you'll um, get some inspiration from um, the exhibition Hung Lu Portraits as Promised Lands, um, which is quite exceptional and will give you highlights um, from the exhibition. We also hope that you'll definitely make connections between her work, her portraits, 
and ourselves and more broadly the, with the world. Okay, so I'll pass it along to Vanessa for the next part. Next slide. Thank you, Jocelyn. I just want to um, quickly mention what we're going to be doing today. Um, so we're going to start with a warm up activity in just a moment, um, and then we'll do a close look at another portrait and we'll finish with a making connections activity. So All right. So as I mentioned, we're going to start with a warm up activity and the, the purpose of whoops. There we go. The purpose of this activity is to um, get you thinking about how we read portraiture. And um, using this example, you know, what kind of clues can you find to make sense of and tell a story about this portrait? So what I'd like you to do is um, take a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen, some sort of writing utensil, I'll just wait a few seconds for you to gather those if you don't have that on your desk already. And then let's start by taking a minute for you to write down all those visual elements that you see in this portrait. So just jot down your observations. So we'll take about 60 seconds to do that. There's a lot going on in this portrait. And as you're doing that, as you're writing down your observations, start to think about how you would categorize them. You know, what kinds of categories of clues do you, are you coming up with? Okay. So using the chat, I'd love to hear from you um, what kinds of observations uh, you noted or what kind of visual clues you observed in this portrait. All right, while we're waiting, you're right, Vanessa, there is a lot to see in this portrait. So just pop in the chat some of your some of those visual clues that might help you tell a story about this portrait or make sense of the portrait. Okay. Oh, they're go. coming in now. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we're seeing lotus strips, priest robe, strobes. Frontal pose, mm -hmm. expression, quiet palette, the vertical orientation. Mm -hmm. Okay, flowers. You notice that there are lots of symbols. You're curious about the technique, right? The sort of a dripping technique of the paint. Great. Another comment about the expression, a man deep in thought. Earlier it was thoughtful expression. Again, noticing the colors, muted colors, the water, flowers. Obviously that he looks to be an Asian man. So a lot of overlap in what you're, what you're noticing. Okay, great. So these are all wonderful observations. So if you were to group 
some of these observations into categories. What kind of categories might you come up with? Like, I'll give an example. Um, pose is one category, right? How would you describe his pose? He's standing. His left hand is down by his side. Expression. Oh, number, oh, go ahead, Jocelyn. Oh, sorry, Vanessa. I was just going to yeah. say um, it looks like um, Heather had mentioned elements and their meaning. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, yeah. And then we're seeing color. Colors. Yep. Composition. Great. The background, also the setting mm -hmm. that the sitter or the subject of the portrait is standing in, right? So these kinds of categories we refer to at the portrait gallery as elements of portrayal. So I'm going to go to the next slide. And so when we are looking at a portrait, we typically ask our students or members of our audience to look at the portrait through these clues, many of which you already have noticed, color, you mentioned the medium, it's oil on canvas. And what I should mention, because there is um, one of these elements is scale. And of course, when we're doing this virtually, we don't get a sense of the scale, but this is a very large scale portrait. Um, I could not actually find the measurements, um, but I've seen it in person. It's lifelike, if not more than lifelike. Jocelyn, have you been in the gallery yet? I mean, it's probably at least six or seven feet high, the painting. Does that sound about right? By about four or five feet wide? Yeah, actually, I have not been in, but I know that, yes, many of her works, many of her um, portraits are mural size. And so right. that sounds that sounds right. Yeah. So, you know, imagining if you're standing in front of this, you would you would be able to see a lot more detail, obviously, than this one. So hairstyle. Well, in this case, there's no hair, as someone noticed. The clothing, right? Someone mentioned priest's clothing. So the title of this portrait is actually called The Botanist. And it's by the artist Hung Lu that we'll be talking about today. And it dates from 2013. And it's actually a portrait of her grandfather. And he was a teacher and a scholar and was very formative in her life while she was still living in China before she immigrated to the United States as a young woman. And um, he, as a researcher, had spent uh, a lot of time in a particular mountain in China, which was well known as a religious site. And so a lot of monks and nuns and priests lived there. And her grandfather, her maternal grandfather, was um, he was interested in studying those communities and the religious shrines that are found in that um, in that mountain area. And so this is obviously a reference to her grandfather and his intellectual interests in this portrait. And you noticed a lot of symbols, the flowers. So you are correct. There is a lotus, a couple of lotuses actually. And the, um, the lotus symbolizes Oh, I forgot where my notes are. Oh, yes, the lotus symbolizes, um, in many cultures actually, purity, enlightenment, regeneration, rebirth. Some of you noticed the crane on the left side of the portrait, and the crane is a symbol of longevity and happiness and eternal youth. I don't know if anyone, well, there's also the flowers at the front, at the um, sort of at the foot of his robe. And I couldn't find in my research what those flowers were, but in doing my own research on Google, it appears that those flowers are Japanese anemones. 
and um, at, at least according to their appearance in the portrait. And those um, symbolize, because apparently they close at night and open in the morning and they are, oh, maybe they're daffodils. Okay, hmm, perhaps. Um, if they are these Japanese anemones, then they represent um, enjoying the moment, being in the moment, relaxing and anticipating the next moment. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this exercise and hopefully, hopefully it was a good warm up because we're gonna use these same elements of portrayal or visual elements um, when we look at the next portrait with Jocelyn. Oh, excuse me. I uh, this is a um, this is a uh, some views of the exhibition. So here you get a sense of how large her portraits are. And this is actually our exhibition in um, our exhibition space of the portraits of Promised Land exhibition. And um, that exhibition opened in August, and it's a celebration of fifty years of Hung Wu's work. And um, it was meant to be a celebration of her work, which it still is, but she actually passed away very recently. So um, after very quickly after a brief, uh, after a brief in, um, illness. And so it's sort of become a posthumous tribute to her. And this exhibition at the National Portrait Gallery is the first time that her work is being seen through the lens of portraiture. So Hung Lu, she was a Chinese-born American artist. She was born in China in 1948. And um, as I mentioned, in 1984, when she was still a young woman, she immigrated to the United States actually as a student to study art. And um, she's, has, she stayed here and lived here ever since. And um, she grew up during the period of the Chinese uh, revolution. And so it was a time of a lot of upheaval for her and her family. And she came from a very educated upper-class family. And so um, as a result, during this period, her family had to, um, in order to remove any signs of their being part of this educated um, part of society, they had to destroy most of their family photographs or um, hide, put into storage or hiding the remaining photographs. Um, and so a lot of her portraits actually um, are referred to portraits, uh, sorry, to photographs. So they're either photographs of her family members, um, which those that she could take with her when she left or when she would go back to visit, um, get some of those family photographs or photographs of other individuals, but anonymous individuals. So she was particularly interested in, through her portraiture, bringing voice to people who, who have been historically marginalized or invisible. So particularly women. So over the course of her career, she would portray refugees, women soldiers, migrant laborers. She even was inspired by um, portraits that were taken during the American Depression, the early 1930s, prostitutes, orphan children, and um, you know, other kinds of individuals who were not necessarily well known, but who were um, who were very important parts of history. And she's trying to honor these individuals in her portraiture. So you'll see in her work both. Um, family represented, and then, as I mentioned, uh, many other anonymous individuals. So at this point, just I hope this was a good background for this exhibition before we go on to our next portrait. And Jocelyn is going to look at this next portrait with you. Thank you. Thanks, Brianna, or not Brianna. <laughs> Thank you, Vanessa. And um, I have to say, I'm personally just thrilled that um, the National Portrait Gallery does have this um, solo re retrospective of uh, Hung Lu's. It's actually the first time um, a woman of Asian descent um, has her solo work um, at the museum. 
So um, yes, as Vanessa said, in, um, in regards to the next portrait that we're going to delve into, we wanted to model um, a thinking routine um, based on Project Harvard's um, Project Zero thinking routines, um, and particularly the one called Unveiling Stories. And you'll see on your screen um, the progression and the line of questioning for this routine. And this routine is um, used to um, take apart, um, uncover, layer by layer um, what uh, you'll be seeing in a portrait, um, in this case with the portrait. Um, it is quite complex and it's a great way to really pull things um, slowly one by one. Um, and so we will, I'll just go ahead and um, model how this might work in regards to um, the portrait that we have. So Vanessa, if I could have you show the portrait. And actually, if you'd like to um, view it as well, let me put in the chat box the link where you can pull it up um, and perhaps have a Oh, you're muted, Jocelyn. I'm sorry. All right. Um, as you're taking a look at the portrait, uh, again, this is another portrait with a lot to take in. Let's think about the first question. What is the story? So put in the chat box what you think this story is based on initial observations. And as you're putting that in, just wanted to give you a bit of um, reference to this uh, painting. Hung Lu created this um, in a series and um, several of them were shown together. Um, and this one um, is highlighted. Um, in the exhibition and one that we'll um, take a close look at. All right, so I saw a couple responses. Um, so story of change, of separation. Okay, they are women who work behind the scenes. Oh, metamorphosis. Yeah. Healing rituals. Interesting. Okay. Story of women and their subjugation. Multi generational. Interesting. These are great, great ideas. Yes. Yes. And sorrow. A few people have mentioned unhappiness and sorrow. Yeah. And I'm curious, those that um, shared these, these emotions, sorrow, fear, isolation, um, what clues in the portrait, what elements um, revealed these emotions to you? Ah, all right. So we're seeing some of the facial expression. Ooh, yes, the downcast eyes, definitely the posture. Oh, definitely, and the dripping paint. Yes, we're seeing that dripping paint. And that is um, signature um, that we're seeing in many of Hung Lu's works, this dripping of the linseed oil.
Uh, interesting. All right. So color plays into how you're viewing the emotions with a muted palette, um, with the red in the background. And I'm curious too, as we're looking at the red and the background, if, um, if I can have you pull out additional things that you're seeing just in the background as we're trying to pull out the story. What are you seeing? Ah, okay. So you're seeing parts of faces, perhaps swords, a scroll, like it's behind a garden. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Van Vanessa. No, I just, uh, someone commented guns. Oh, okay. All right. Ambiguity. Yeah, the background is ambiguous. Yes. Excellent. All right. And we're also seeing some, some insects, some cat caterpillars and butterflies. And again, um, similar to what Vanessa was saying, there is um, lots of symbolism um, in her works. Um, butterflies, as you know, represent transformation, change, comfort, hope, um, and positivity. All right. Well, um, just to give you a little tidbit of information before we move on to the next question, um, as, uh, as Vanessa also said, Hung Lu is known for tape sourcing these historic photographs and creating these portraits. So we know that um, this portrait was um, based on a photograph that Hung Lu had found in the 1990s um, when she was uh, doing um, her work and um, building her um, career as an artist. And um, the photograph she found was during the time of World War II. So with that tidbit of information, my next question to you is, what is the human story? So, I had asked broadly what you think the story is. Now, from the angle of the human perspective, individual, personal perspective, what is the human story? Ooh. I see some wonderful responses. The patience of women. Okay. Women have shared destiny. Interesting. Okay. Quiet endurance together. And I see these women could be in a concentration camp. Exhaustion of war. Okay. All right. Healing through drums, concern. All right, so we are getting lots of responses about the human story. Okay. 
Okay. And um, I think also these are all very um, thought provoking. So in regards to the human story, you all have responded. These are um, perhaps paint resembles the sweat dripping after a hard day, stream of women. To me, Jocelyn, I think that, you know, I, I, I think that what, what people are saying sort of is that these are women who are suffering. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't know the exact circumstances, um, but, you know, they're, they're in a difficult, painful situation. Right, right. And um, definitely we're, we're seeing them based on the elements that you all described, their posture, um, their facial expression, um, their, uh, their gaze, you know, we've got some gazing, um, gazes at us, some, um, I see, yes, downcast expressions. So the, the personal individual story that we're seeing is one, um, that we're getting a sense of sadness and sorrow. Well, um, I wanna also add some more to the story to help um, expand what you're seeing um, before I ask the next question. Um, and I believe someone had um, really touched on it. So um, Hung Lu, had created this portrait based on a photograph that was taken during World War II. And um, they were um, these sitters, the individuals in the portrait are um, women of Korean descent. And um, this uh, photograph was taken in China and um, they are, um, they were, known as comfort women. And comfort women were, um, well, it was estimated that there were close to 200,000 comfort women, which was a euphemism used for mainly Korean women who were forced in Japanese military run brothels during World War II. And so Hung Lu has reclaimed the photograph by taking um, her perspective on this. So with that, let me ask you the next question. What is the world story with this in regards to, you know, expanding it beyond these women? What is the world story? Yes, we're seeing some of it, the horrors of war. Definitely a hard, um, a hard topic. Women as property. Mm, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yes, and in fact, um, Hung Lu is noted for commenting on how um, in China women are uh, were were seen as property to be owned and discarded um, and um, used uh, at will.
Yes, definitely that ignoring of the value of women. And um, according to uh, what we know, um, these women, when um, the Japanese uh, retreated from China, um, these women were left um, stateless and um, had uh, no home. Um, and so we see that um, in this portrait. And Hung Lu is, is bringing light to that. Um, you'll notice, I think there was some discussion about the background um, and how some faces were covered up. Um, Hung Lu had intentionally painted over some of the um, Japanese military images um, of some of the Japanese men and soldiers in the background. Um, but you'll also, noticed, um, I know you all noticed the swords as well. So um, keeping that in mind, she's left the swords. She's tried to paint, um, have that dripping over the soldiers. I'm just curious why she did that. What do you, why do you think she left the swords in the image? but removed the men. Oh, okay, we're getting that no blame, com complex cultural dynamics. Yes, giving power to the women. Okay, swords could represent the power of men, definitely. All right. Well, um, given that, I think you all kind of segued into my next question and probably answered it. What is the new story? Based on um, the additional information that has been given, has your story changed? Has what you thought about the story changed? So what's the new story now? Ooh, the devil has no face. Mm -hmm. My. What is the new story now? Oh, I like this one, hope. <laughs> Ooh, resilience, yes, definitely. And we get that, that sense of resilience um, based on um, these elements that we're seeing, the butterfly, the caterpillar, that rebirth. Um, and then, the final question, which I think um, you all have touched on as well, is what is the untold story? And I think Hung Lu tries to um, definitely highlight the untold story. But to you, what, what is that untold story? Oh, transformation. Okay. Yes, the untold story is definitely um, these forced sex slaves that um, usually are invisible the quiet strength of these women, um, 
Yes. Is there is there accountability? Uh, hey, have we woken up? Well, um, I know time is escaping us, and I just did a super fast version of this thinking routine um, and unveiling the story behind this portrait. But um, hopefully you got a taste of how to um, use these, these questions as you peel away um, layers to the portrait and to the story. So with that, I'm gonna pass it back to Vanessa. Thanks, Jocelyn. Yeah, what a, what a wonderful portrait. And you all just had so many interesting comments and observations. I really enjoyed reading what you all had to say. Uh, it really helped me to get a deeper understanding of the portrait. So this is an activity called Your Turn. And this is an opportunity for you to connect um, one of the two portraits that we just looked at, either the botanist or strange fruit, comfort women, with another portrait from this exhibition. And I believe that, um, yes, so um, there's already a link in the chat to the Portrait Gallery's um, learning lab, or there's, we need, we need to put the, um, yeah, here it is, great, thank you, sorry. Um, right, so you can go to this learning lab, uh, open that link and you'll see a number of other portraits from this exhibition. So take about five or six minutes to scroll through this learning lab and select a portrait that resonates for you and, um, as you are selecting your portrait, keep these three questions in mind that are on the screen. So what resonates with you about this artwork that you chose? What connects the two artworks? So the one that you selected plus one of the other two we've just looked at. And how can you connect these portraits to contemporary issues? Let's take about five minutes, five or six minutes to do that. I see some comments. You're already thinking about some other portraits outside of this exhibition that would connect. That's great. Let's just take another minute or two. And we're gonna take um, a few minutes to share out as well. And we can actually do that in a few minutes um, verbally. Just take a couple more minutes to select your, your portrait. 
Okay, I, I see a comment already. Mission Girls is a lot like the faces of the women prostitutes. Okay, so let's take a few minutes. I'd love to hear from you, um, your portrait and, and how you answer these three questions on the screen. And um, Carol, I hope you don't mind me calling you out. Um, if you'd like to expand a little bit on your comment in the chat, if you prefer to use the chat or if you'd like to unmute yourself, um, I'd love to hear from you, um, your thoughts about the connection between Mission Girls and um, the faces of the women prostitutes. So the, the um, strange fruit piece. Not a problem. Um, the Mission Girls, to me, the little faces are no different to the older faces. The sadness is there. The future is none. Mm. The, the way they're dressed is uniformal. It's it's just a lost childhood heading into a lost adulthood. Yeah, thank you. Do you have any thoughts about how um, what you've just shared connects with what are some <clears throat> contemporary issues where we see these same issues? Um, well, I was born of a prostitute, so I have a lot of those familiar looking mm. um, faces of people that were in that industry have got no future, but they just do what they've got to do to make a living. Yeah. And survive. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Carol, for sharing that. You're welcome. Yeah. So I see a lot of wonderful comments, but I'm gonna ask you whoever would like to go next, just go ahead and unmute and, um, and share your thoughts. I think as we're waiting, there were a couple that, um, that had similar um, choices with goddess of love. I'm going to put, <laughs> um, what is it, Alicia and Jennifer on the spot. Mm -hmm. Perhaps one of you, both of you could um, share with us your reason for choosing goddess of love. Hi, I don't know if you can hear me. This is Jennifer. Yes. Um, I chose that one because it shows her with the bound feet. Um, which is that standard of beauty and uh, I imagine quite a bit of pain that they have to endure for that um, and it has a little broom and a chalkboard um, which made me think of schooling and cleaning and then the little cup had uh, uh, sexual imagery on it so everything pointed to some sort of service mm -hmm. and then it made me think of the continued objective objectification of women, even though things are getting better, still still an issue. I, I also thought about um, just the container that the women are put in. This is the place that they belong. Well, uh, both images made me feel that way, that there was a place for women and they need to stay in that place. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. Yeah, and what we see here is that these themes that Hung Lu is exploring really are universal themes, right? Um, even though they are connected to a certain place in time in her portraits, particular historical events or particular family members, um, you know, the issues that she's dealing with are really issues that we're still dealing with today and, and they're quite universal. So let's just take one more because um, we are running out of time. But I'd love to hear from one more of you. Would, would anybody like to unmute? Linda, I saw you raise your hand. Go right ahead. I think I'd like to talk a little bit about the refugee mother and child, especially 
relevant nowadays where the number of refugees worldwide is increasing. The first thing that struck me is that this is a repudiation of the simpering mother and baby pictures that we have been used to from uh, Christian iconography and from 19th century portraiture. Um, here we're dealing with a woman in existential straits struggling to stay alive. And that's reflected with the primal colors of red and black with little touches of white that uh, punctuate the picture. The closeness and the bonding of the mother and child is severed. The child is off a little ways, looking fairly horrified for such a young infant. The mother is si sitting down, working away, trying to earn enough money to feed her and keep the child alive. We have elements of nature in three different planes in the picture. At the bottom, there is a bird. I'm not quite sure what kind of bird it is. It looks like a sparrow or a thrush, far too large for the perspective. Maybe it's reflective of a soul. Maybe it's reflective of the future of the baby. Maybe it's a bird that has been trapped just as the human beings in the picture are trapped. And then in the middle, you have uh, something that looks like a crane, which is a promise of happiness. But the happiness, if it's reflected in the foliage, uh, in, 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 the, in the plumage and in uh, the head of the bird, are far away, far removed from what is happening now. And then out of reach in the upper left-hand side, you see a fan, I think, with um, a lotus on it. The lotus is the purity and beauty, also very much out of reach from what the mother and the child are experiencing. Wow, thank you, Linda. That's an amazing analysis, so detailed. Thank you for sharing all of that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so you can see how with this, um, with this activity, it's a great way to help, to help people connect uh, works of art to our own lives and to the world and contemporary issues that we're dealing with and living in. So I'm going to hand it back over to Jocelyn at this point, um, because she's going to tell you a little bit more about the resources that are available to you all as teachers. Thanks, Vanessa. So yes, um, we just wanted to end the session, making sure you all have a way to access our resources. So on the National Portrait Gallery's um, site, there's actually a page where you can do a search of all our portraits. You can search um, by individuals and it, um, you can access um, it by, by pulling up um, that link um, to search specifically for portraits. Also, um, I think you all have already found it, but you can find more information about future teacher workshops, um, as well as um, a section on classroom resources. We've got a wonderful one, kind of a basic 101 guide for reading portraiture, which um, highlights and um, goes into more detail about um, what we had done initially in terms of sharing the various elements and um, some strategies to take a look at um, the portraits. Also, Vanessa, if I could have you go to the next page. Thank you. Um, and we all uh, we also had you take a look at the Learning Lab collection of Hung Lu's, but kind of on a broader, bigger um, uh, perspective, you can access the Smithsonian Learning Lab. And this is where um, you can find resources and collections from all of the Smithsonian Museum's um, various collections, not just the National Portrait Gallery. Um, although we do have our own um, landing page learning lab site um, that you can access um, specifically for portrait gallery things. Otherwise, you can um, access uh, the learning lab, um, the Smithsonian Learning Lab, and um, 
look and explore um, various collections from the other Smithsonian's. Now, just also um, to let you know, you may know already, um, but you can actually make your own collections as educators and students. So you can research, you can gather, you can use it as um, a platform and a learning tool. Okay. All right, uh, next slide, Vanessa, thank you. And um, this is near and dear to me since I coordinate student programs, but you can off, um, definitely have, um, you have the opportunity to um, arrange a field trip for your students. Um, we're currently offering virtual field trips throughout the year. Um, we are hopeful that we can offer uh, in-person visits starting in the new year, but definitely um, check out the link to find out more information about student programs. Uh, Vanessa? All Thank right. you. Um, Jocelyn, I did want to point out, if you haven't noticed, that um, our colleague has dropped a link to the PDF of this presentation uh, into the chat so you can access that and access the links. And I also saw that there's someone who is looking at hotels <laughs> wanting to come and see the show in person. I think it was Ramona. Well, I hope it, your trip works out because it would be wonderful to have you visit the exhibition. And yes. on that note, I think Jocelyn, um, I think we'll wrap up and, and thank you so much for coming. Oh, how long is the exhibition on? So it closes in May, 2022. Um, are we able to access the video from this? The video, Jocelyn, which video would that be? Um, I'm not sure if it if, if it's this actual session, um, the recording. Oh, is, recording of the workshop, yes. got it. Yes. Um, How do we make those available, Jocelyn? This that is a good question. I think we will um, end up posting it or um, having it available um, under the uh, teacher section. Or you can email one of these, my email and my colleague Brianna, you can email, um, well, Brianna is the best person to email for the recording as well. That sounds good. All right. Well, thank you all so much. Uh, thank you, Brianna. It's going to be on our YouTube channel. Good that she's here to answer this question. Yes. Um, thank you so much for spending an hour with us today. We hope you have a great rest of your evening or afternoon, wherever in the world you are, and um, all the best and hope to see you at another one of our programs. <laughs>